Welcome to another thrilling adventure in programming and another devlog in Farmhold. My name is Marty and this effect with the camera looks so nice I'd be tempted to use it 100% of the time. It's been a moment since the last devlog, I think that was about a month ago, I noted a serious problem to the believability of the game. As it sits right now, the player looks like he's either suffering from a full body charlie horse, or he fell into the brine at the pickle factory and is actually a human pickle. Those aren't really images that I want the player to perceive, and neither do I actually, so something must be done to get this player a little more lifelike. It was time for animations. The program I've been using recently has been Librasprite, which is a free open source version of ASE Sprite. I do have to say that Librasprite is the best animation program for pixel art I have ever seen. So far I've got three animations nailed down. The first is the walk cycle, which after quite a few tries, I was able to get it refined to something that I was happy with. The goal for the game is to be a mix between visual aesthetics and engaging gameplay. So I don't care so much if the animations are slightly off. In addition to that I've got the idle animation which is just for when the player isn't doing much he's just doing his thing after that I've got the primary attack for the player nailed down pretty far and if you look closely in certain frames his face actually gives a bit of a red flare to it and that's just to show he's exerting himself as he twirls around his pitchfork like a monk I'm pretty happy with the primary attack animation. Eventually, we're going to have a secondary attack, which is going to be an uppercut that comes down from below, which will send the rats spraying into the air. This here is a previous version of the player in which I wasn't quite entirely happy with the way it looked. For one, I couldn't draw much attention to his mustache because his shirt was a very dark color. And then if I tried to make the mustache a dark color as well, you couldn't see it at all. In addition to that, the previous iteration of the attack was actually pretty bad. I originally thought that this was amazing that I was able to do this, but times do change and your skills do improve over time. Libre Sprite offers two types of output. The first is an actual PNG file, which is the texture or the sprite sheet. And it also, quite nicely if I do say so myself, allows you to output a JSON file of the metadata for all the frames. To plug the JSON file into the code, I downloaded a library called JSON CPP. After that, I wrote up a basic function which takes in a file path as a parameter and outputs an array of animation cycles. I simply have to create an animation set, call the function, and then I can play whichever cycle I want. For example, I can play the idle animation or I can play the walking animation. This way I don't have to hard code any of the values in and I can just simply load the JSON file and I can do all the sprite editing in Libre Sprite. Now what's a JSON file you might say? Well, a JSON file is a... JSON is a data format that's very common in most programming language, and it stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Hey Marty, I thought you said C++ is the best, and you should never use any other language. Isn't that like, treason or something? <laughs> C++ forever! The certifies and proves that C++ is the best program language that there is. Case closed. That actually did hurt a little bit. Now, some of you may be thinking that I've defiled C++ by using JSON files with it, but it's very common with most programming languages to use JSON files. I'm not a turncoat to C++ just because I'm using JSON files. It, 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 C++ is the best, C++ is the best, C++ is the best. So the JSON files just provide a very nice way of streamlining my production in Libre Sprite into my game. So that this way, if I want to change the, oh, this is the wrong file. If I want to change the duration of an individual frame, I can simply just edit it to be as long as I want. So let's just say 600 milliseconds. And as you see, that change is reflected in the game as well. You can see it has a big pause on the down of uh, an, uh, idle cycle. After I finished the work on the animations, I began examining the physics engine of my game and I found a couple odd anomalies, such as, uh, such as this. Um, that's not supposed to be happening. Things fall apart very quickly in this strange physics world. 
so I have approximately zero theories on what is going on here. I don't even know where to start. I followed the physics of the university to the T. So there was only one reasonable thing left to do, and that was create a pit full of bouncy balls. That was, that was the only thing that could be done here. So <laughs> the physics. <laughs> Uh, well, it does look cool, so there's that, uh, definitely an interesting little thing. Uh, you might be wondering why there's the little line next to the, like, the little line on them, and that's just like, and you can clearly tell that these balls are not rotating in at all, which is another problem, still have to work on rotations in the physics engine. I know what I can do, I can test the gravity of this little world, just like Isaac Newton did. Okay there, old Jeremiah, you just hold still now while I drop this iron cannonball. Don't flinch, buddy. Wow, that actually worked surprisingly well. Ooh, that's gonna leave a bit of a mark there, old pal. So you notice that if I drop something really heavy on the player, which these balls are really heavy, they're iron balls, uh, they just warp right through. So, does it look cool? Yes. Does it work? No. I'm at a crossroads now where I'm gonna go either one of two paths. The first one is just use box 2D. Probably should have done that all along. In which case I'll leave the physics to the pros. Or the second thing is I'll try and patch back together my physics engine using box 2D light, which is an older, more lightweight version of box 2D itself. But if I'm patching together my physics system and just basing it off of box 2D anyways, then there's not much point in not using box 2D. I've learned a ton from making my own physics engine, the main thing being that I can't make my own physics engine. I'm leaning towards just using box 2D. I might try and resurrect my dying physics engine. I implemented CMake into the compilation process of Farmall. Let's see how long a little compile takes. So ready, set, compile. Yeah, I'm fairly certain I could grow a beard in the amount of time it takes to compile this every single time. The explanation of why it takes so long to compile every single time is because I have a lot of source files, and using this particular method, I'm compiling every single source file even if I only changed animation.cpp. This cleverly drawn illustration will demonstrate exactly how CMake works and what it's like to program without CMake. Okay, so we've got the lads in the garage here. They're just working on the vehicle, doing their mechanic thing. We've got Pat here. He's kind of the boss of the operation, and he doesn't do much other than yell at Chuck over here. Which, uh, Chuck, he's kind of just the go boy, and he does whatever he's told, which he actually kind of hates his job. You can kind of see him. He's got a little frowny face. He's not too happy about things. So they're just wallowing in their self-perpetuating misery that they inflict upon each other. And you can see that over here, um, for some reason, there's gas spill on the floor. Earlier, one of the two guys accidentally tripped over it and spilled all over the place. They're kind of too lazy to clean it up. And then beside the gas, we got a bucket of bolts. It's just kind of kicking around. Not a whole lot going on. Everything's just going pretty smoothly, as mechanics does. Right, and then uh, Pat starts bellering at Chuck. He starts yelling, Oh, come on, Chuck, work on that nut. Get that thing loose. Urgh, back in my day, I can do this twice as good. Urgh, this makes me so mad. Like, hurry up, man. Like, what's taking so long? Ah, oh, man, I hate this job. And that's when Chuck realizes that the reason it's been taking him so long to loosen the nut is because he's already stripped the nut and he's using too big of a wrench. So Chuck just tosses the wrench over his shoulder. The wrench sails through the air and just narrowly misses Pat, which you can imagine it gets Pat pretty irritated because he just about got clunked by a wrench. And then he yells, I need a 916! And that's when Wilson comes along. Hey guys, hey guys, I got the wrench right here. So Wilson thinks that he's got the wrench and he also thinks he's wearing mechanic overalls, but those are actually just pajamas. He's not even wearing the right tool for the job. Uh, well, well, bring it over then. And uh, Wilson does exactly that. He comes charging in. Run, 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 run. And Pat's about to yell at Wilson to slow down so he doesn't trip over the bucket of nuts. But Wilson, I mean, doesn't even hear anything. I mean, Wilson's kind of just out of the loop. Run, 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 right. Kick! Whoa! This sends Wilson flying over Pat, and Wilson's still got that big fat grin. He's clearly enjoying this whole process. And that sends the bucket of bolts flying into the air. And then the nuts go spraying all over Pat. Pat clearly gets pretty irritated about that. Like, dude! And then Wilson finally touches back down on Earth. Say, guys, do you still need that wrench? Mm. 
now at this point Pat's got a bit of a mess to clean up. You can see that both Pat and Chuck are very irritated at Wilson for his tomfoolery. Instead of picking up the nuts and maybe cleaning up the gas that's a bit of a hazard, Pat swiftly lights a match, throws it at the gas, and proceeds to burn down the entire garage, all because of Wilson's act of tomfoolery. We can all clearly see that this is less than optimal for programming standards, and in fact a lot of time is wasted in rebuilding the garage every time something as simple as Wilson tripping over a bucket of bolts goes. With CMake, however, Pat would instead pick up one of the bolts and proceed to whip it at Wilson's head. And with that, Wilson would rapidly scramble away in fear of getting pelted with more nuts. Then Pat could begin the process of cleaning up the nuts on the ground and salvaging what he could out of the catastrophe. That, in a nutshell, is more or less how CMake works. The difference is really substantial. Before, if I wanted to change something as simple as showing the frame rate or not, which it set it to false if I didn't want to, actually takes very little time at all to actually recompile. It takes less than three seconds. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Make sure you code like coders. And remember, C++ forever. I'll see you in next video after a quick word from today's sponsor. Mech Van Buck Trophy Mosquito is a hilarious humor book written by my dad, Peter and Mast. It is the prelude to a bigger Mick Van Buck that we are currently in the process of publishing, and we are also doing an audiobook, which I have the pleasure of voicing. So if you like hearing my whiny voice, then be sure to stay tuned for when that comes out. We'll probably throw it up on Audible, Spotify, iTunes, wherever the cool kids are at these days. I don't know. So what is Mick Van Buck? Mick Van Buck is clean humor written by my dad, Peter and Mast, and family supports family. That is what you do for your family. So we're going to be giving away Mick Van Buck Trophy Mosquitoes Limited Edition. Get them while they last. Trophy Mosquitoes is a smaller sample of the bigger Mick Van Buck that we're currently publishing. And it's hilarious to read. If we crack this rascal open, I lifted the bear's large paw with the barrel of the gun that was still smoking from the recent shots. This was undeniably a grizzly bear with her long three inch claws on her paws. I replied, this is no black bear. Max gasped in shock and said, Is it a grizzly? as his eyes dashed back and forth. I replied sarcastically, No, it's a melanistic polar bear. He replied, It is? He must have been excited as his lips started flapping before his brain had kicked into first gear. All you gotta do to claim your Mick Van Buck Trophy Mosquito is send your full name and mailing address to codegopher at gmail.com. Get them while they last because laughter is guaranteed.